Okay, so I ordered this mini PC to create a firewall and so far I like the packaging. Back is all good. Yep. It's pretty neat built. So the picture on the side does not do justice to the quality I'm seeing here. Obviously, we have to power it on and see how it goes. Um, but yeah, what I'm looking, uh, I like it. Just for the reference, I did not order the um, SSD and RAM uh, because it's uh, it's better to get uh, from here. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. So, if there's anything else, probably the power supply. Yes, power supply is in there. A couple of cables, SATA, connector, maybe a fan. Probably, I'll have to open it and see. Because this is the generic power supply, I believe. But yeah, looks good. <coughs> All right, so. If uh, I forgot the name, I believe it was. No, I forgot the name. Yep. All right, so I op opened it up. Uh, I very much like what I'm seeing, uh, fanless, of course, but uh, uh, looks good, looks very, very good. Neat, clean, uh, it's not uh, cheaply made, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, it's The build quality is good. Uh, you can see I don't have any RAM or SSD. That's what I'm going to order now and plug it in. Here I went with the WD Blue M.2 uh, 500 GB. The reason I went with, uh, with, went with that uh, is because the operation is not right in Tensev. It's installed once and be done. There will be some log files creation, but it won't be as right in Tensev as some other application. Uh, where I n normally use Samsung M.2. Uh, for the RAM, I went with 32 GB Vengeance Corsair Vengeance. The reason I went with that is because uh, the price difference between a 16 GB kit and 32 GB kit was only five bucks. 32, uh, 16 GB kit was 30 bucks and 32 GB kit was 34.99. It was a no-brainer because down the road I can change this if I uh, if I want to I can make this just a Ubuntu server uh, or just a Ubuntu machine uh, to play with. Uh, I didn't want to go with 8GB RAM because uh, and I'm glad I did not. Be, uh, afterwards when I was testing I was using 16% of 32GB so almost eight or more so <clears throat> with the pf sense the more uh, packages and add-ins plugins you use it uses uh, more ram and i want it to be future proof in terms like if i have to um, uninstall pf sense and convert into a um, ubuntu machine so that as well the build quality is phenomenal on this like I've said before uh, it was all metal body unfortunately no direct fan on the uh, processor itself so in the dashboard I was I'm reading 27.9 Celsius uh, that ho how hot the processor gets but luckily since the body is all metal I have a uh, fan on top of it a USB fan that's being powered from the device itself and it's cool to the touch it's it's cold um the body so i'm very happy with it it's been a month or more than a month actually and i have no issues i'm, I'm loving this thing uh, and pf sense of course all right so found the problem i searched online um to, uh, the problem with PFSense uh, and network interface uh, card uh, compatibility is an issue. Uh, it's a constant ongoing battle. Uh, so when I search for the error that PFSense can't continue with the, uh, with the without at least one inter network interface card, 
the solution is to use 2.7 I verified we were using 2.6 so that's what I'm gonna do unfortunately my phone is out of battery I have to go and plug it in so probably will not be able to uh, live capture everything troubleshooting but I will update once uh, I'm all done so here is my Linksys WRT 1200AC the router that I loved cherished the most uh, I'm sad that I have to retire it and go for uh, an access point the reason being that after installing that PF sense and turning off the Wi-Fi and making it essentially uh, sorry turning off the routing and making it essentially an access point I am seeing some issues some issues that I believe are not PF sense but the Linksys Linksys uh, uh, I know for a fact I used to have a DDRT on it uh, I had it installed and I then after a few couple of years I tried to log in to the interface and I was surprised that it had reverted to Linksys that should not have happened so I searched online and it turned out that yeah if there's a certain way of uh, power cycling it uh, like uh, twice uh, once and then second time midway it will revert back to Linksys original uh, it was a surprise I don't know if I ever done that maybe it was uh, a brownout don't know but that's what happened now what I'm uh, um, experiencing is that uh, sometime the Wi-Fi is not like you you see the SSID but uh, it my Google TV Chrome uh, cast uh, it will connect but will keep saying internet is not uh, available and it will take a good five minutes before it starts to connect um, my one of the my Windows PC I believe that had something to do with PF sense uh, it was auto negotiating down port to 100 MB while it's supposed to be gig port uh, I don't know if it's Linksys, PFSense, whatever. I am actively testing it, but it is time to retire all that uh, and switch to an access point. So, if it has something to do with the routing feature, router, trying to wake up, I can get rid of that and have peace of mind. Um, I, my son will be doing most of the um or almost all of the physical setup i will show him how to do it in the back end because we're gonna uh, i'm thinking to create vlans and separate iot devices uh, and uh, home automation out of my real network all right so this will be done maybe three four days stay tuned